Hello, this is Tom from Never Center, and in this video I'm going to show you the hot new stuff that we've got in Silo 2023.3. And frankly, a lot of the hot new stuff in this is under the hood and not really demonstratable. Um, we, we've done some deep dive work on this to speed up basically every geometry modification operation, and especially on high poly models, and especially when you're undoing something before uh, that could actually get really slow in silo. If you had a high poly model, change some geometry and hit undo. Um, and we have dramatically addressed that. And also as an added benefit, uh, we lowered the memory usage um, noticeably on uh, those high poly models. So that's one of the big banner features of this. Um, but like I said, not easy to show. But the other thing which is easy to show is our new radial mirror uh, modifier. So um, I've created a little segment of a wheel here using the gear wheel primitive, and then I deleted most of the faces. Um, so say if you're gonna design a tire or something, you'd create something like this to start with. I designed this to be 1 12th of the wheel and gave myself some geometry to work with to make the tread and whatever. Um, so Maybe uh, let's let's do some operations on this before we even uh, apply. Whoops, our mirror operation. What do I want to do? I want to make some zigzags. So I'm going to select these guys, make them zig and zag like this, and then I'm going to make some insets for these treads. So I'm going to extrude these, and let's make them go. We'll make them go out. That's fine. Now, um, we will now add our modifier, our radial mirror modifier, which also makes arrays. So you can think of it as an array, like it's copying this object, or you can think of it as mirroring. Um, and so, like I said, I designed this uh, to be 12 segments around. So if I change that number to 12, then you can see it's nicely radially mirroring that. And if I do something like select some of these and move them around, you can see that it's applying that to each of those segments. So I don't have to do that, each of those operations around the whole dang tire. So that is uh, really handy. Um, and uh, it's got the controls that you would expect, the number of segments. Like I said, uh, I've designed this for 12 number of degrees that you want this to go around so I can make it fewer than 360 degrees but with 12 segments uh, they're overlapping each other so that's what you're seeing there um, let's set that to 360 you can also make it more than 360 degrees and I'll show you why you might want to in a minute um, well actually I'll show you right now so this axis stretch this will along whatever axis so you choose the axis here worldwide is what we're choosing if I chose like world X, it would do some really funky weird things, which sometimes this can just be cool ways to generate shapes. Just try mirroring it and you can get some cool spaceship sh shapes or whatever. But anyway, this, this one really only makes sense on the world Y axis. Um, the axis stretch will sort of push it up or down along the axis that it is um, mirrored along. So, and if I increase the degrees, you can see why sometimes you might want to make it go more than 360 degrees. So let's go with 360 for now, and let's put this axis stretch back to zero. Now, we've got some um, handy little things, some treats for you in this modifier. One of them is this scale to fill button. And if I first click this, you're not going to really see anything happen. Um, and uh, the idea for this actually came from a, a, a motorcycle designer friend of ours named Greg. And so um, in the back of your mind, what we call this, we call this the Gregorian scale. Um, this was a great idea that he had. And he was specifically talking about designing wheels and tire treads. And he said, sometimes you want to like design this, but you want to see what this would look like. What if instead of being 12 segments, this, this particular segment was squished and I want to see how many um, segments it looks good with. And so you can see as I increase the number of segments with 
the scale to fill, i.e. the Gregorian scale, check mark checked. Um, I can see what this looks like with this tire treads if they're much more compactly packed. Um, and so you, you don't have to know beforehand what really, you know, percentage of your wheel this is going to end up taking up. You can test and just see what it looks like if it's, you know, scaled more or less. So super handy thing. Thanks, Greg. Um, and okay, so let's go, let's talk about merge open edges. So if I turn off the modifier, you can see I've got open edges that have no other face attached. If I turn back on the modifier, um, and I'll hit subdivide here so that you can see there's weird stuff going on at these, at these edges. You can see when I subdivide it, it's got creases there because they're not actually getting merged from one segment to the next. So if I click this, it will attempt to merge them. But you can still see it's still got those creases. That's because the merge tolerance is too low. So some of those some of those vertices are not quite, you know, along the exact um, edge of this segment, radially speaking. So if I like, let's try reducing that by a factor of ten. Okay, that makes it so it's now merging that nicely. Um, so that's what merge open edges does and uh with the merging and with scale to fill also this is a, a handy time to be able to increase or decrease the number of degrees when i've got that scale to fill button checked because it will keep it you know um I've, my number of segments fixed but it will scale them to fit however many degrees i want and if i Turn on the axis stretch and go more than 360 degrees. I can make cool um, spiral shapes. And you'll also notice uh, with merge open edges turned on that it's smoothly um, scaling this, smoothly uh, increasing each vertex in the shape up as it goes around. So if I unclick that, you can see each segment wants to just have the same flat top as the original segment. But um, when I merge open edges, it will smooth that all so that these steps become a nice smooth thing. So you can make really complicated, beautiful shapes with this. Um, and uh, it's not just for wheels and tires. And one other thing that I'll just mention is... Um, you know, you may want like spokes for your wheel. So let's put this back to 360 degrees and the axis stretched to zero. And so I've got some wheel here and let's give it spokes. And these are going to be very boring spokes. But say I create a cube and let's scale it in so it's sort of spoke-like. And then I'm going to, let's make it be at a kind of crazy angle actually. Make this spoke be spoke hat. Um, and then if I add its own radial mirror modifier, um, you can see uh, it's basically like a radial array because I'm not attempting to merge these at all. But then it's very handy to just, you know, see how it looks with different numbers of these. And if I do some modifications to this, like if I bevel the whole shape or like, uh, you know, pull up a face or something. Whoops, I didn't want to do it that way. I want to do it this way. Um, you can really quickly do some really cool things. Um, and it's great, like I say, not just for wheels, but for, you know, spaceships or uh, any number of things. So we hope that you'll find awesome new uses for this feature, um, this radial mirror. And uh, hopefully you'll find our um, scale to fill, the Gregorian scale, to be very useful. Um, oh, I guess one thing that I did not uh, address is this alternate flip, um, which basically, so I'll show this real quick. If I have, you know, one edge of this is like sticking up. So my original shape, the right side of this does not match the left side in terms of um, when I, um, when I, uh, mirror it around, it can't merge it. When I do this alternate flip on here, it will each segment it will basically mirror across the axis so that you know what was the right edge of this segment 
gets mirrored, so that's now the left edge of the segment next to it, which just makes it so that it automatically will sort of match up, and uh, you can then you can do funky things and not worry about um, the edges merging being you know the exact same on both sides of your original shape. But anyway, I pray that your wheels that you design and make will look better than this one here does. But hopefully that gave you all the demo you needed to uh, understand how to use this, and we're excited to see what you come up with. Thanks.